come into control on all my exercises, slow, controlled movement. And moving slow won't make you slow. As a matter of fact, if you're going to get explosive, isometrics will make you very explosive. That's one reason why the, the late, great Bruce Lee was a very a big advocate of isometric training. It makes your muscles like coiled springs. Hmm. Interesting enough, the U.S. Um, Olympic judo team uh, up in Massachusetts there under Pedro, um, not Pedro, so, um, Jimmy, Jimmy Pedro. Jimmy Pedro, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. USA, yeah. yeah. The, the strength and conditioning coach came and did a, a little session with me with isometrics, and he said that he, he, he was training all the, uh, the guys in the judo team with isometrics. He felt that it was just the best way to go for preventing injuries, and for you can still work out even if you are injured with ice methods. Yeah, that's, that's you, don't need, that's you don't need a lot of equipment. Yeah, even if you blew your knee out, you could still work your quadriceps and your hamstrings isometrically without irritating your knee. Yeah, that's amazing. And and you're saying that like isometrics could actually make you more explosive. Make you more explosive. You know, there's this idea that if you move fast, you're selectively recruiting fast with muscle fiber. Mm-hmm. The research doesn't support that at all now fast training works you will get stronger mm-hmm. you get more explosive but not because you're moving fast but just because you're getting strong any even going really slow will make you faster and more explosive at no, uh, uh, non uh, at other non-related activities yeah you don't have to move, you don't have to do jump squats with a barbell on your back to get better at jumping you can do real slow or even isometric squats, and then you got to practice jumping. <laughs> if you want to dunk a basketball, you got to go out there and you got to do layups and you got to practice dunking, you know, because it's a skill. Mm-hmm. But, you know, doing box jumps and, you know, uh, power cleans and jump squats with a barbell on your back, you're just fucking your joints up for no good reason. So, what do you think of, uh, you know, in judo, how sometimes when they want to practice their throws, they call it uh, power, power uchikomis. So what it is is that, for example, if I want to throw somebody with a uh, ipon seonage, right? So that's a, a essentially yeah. arm throw. So yeah. what, what, it, what, it, what, what we do in that instance is that I have my uke, the guy that I'm going to throw, and then there's somebody behind them holding them down. So essentially, I can't lift them. You know, like I'm going to try, I'm going to lift them, but then he's going to be held there. Like I'm going to hold him in the air while the, and try and throw him while the other guy in the back of him is holding him back. And I'm thinking about that now. That's like one way that we, in judo, they tend to train for, for explosiveness and, and power and strength. But I'm, I'm thinking about it and it's like, well, that, that, start, that starts to look a lot like isometric, but very specific to judo. Do you think, yeah. would you consider that safe or am I better, would it be better to just focus on isometrics? Suddenly exploding into a, like a heavy weight like that is never mm-hmm. a good idea. Puts a lot of trauma. The other problem with that is you're developing a different skill set. You're never going to throw a guy your weight. Judo is a weight class sport. Mm-hmm. You're fighting guys your own weight. You don't need to lift heavier weights. What you need mm-hmm. to do is be uh, more skilled at working with your partners and your opponents. And you can only do that through repetition. But trying to get strong that way, it, it's just a backward way of doing it. Trying to take strength, uh, trying to um, emulate sports skills with strength training is always a step in the wrong direction. There, uh, it, ca- uh, it causes motor learning confusion. In motor learning, right? skill transfer it's either negative positive or indifferent and that drill would either be indifferent with no real transfer to your your regular throw or in some ways it might even cause negative transfer and what's confusing you have some people that are called discriminators they just have this nervous system that no matter what they do no matter how god awful they, they seem to just thrive and they tend to be the champions so you see a champion athlete doing something like that and getting away with it because he's a discriminator. But the average guy with average genetics, it just works against you. And that's, that's been known for over 100 years in motor learning studies. Better just to practice with your partner and throw on full speed. 
you know, maybe start out a little slow and just build up till you just throw them as hard as you can. And that's where those crash pads really come in handy. So you don't have to just repetitively just take those falls over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Like at our club, we have we have a whole bunch of crash mats and we use them very, very often. Uh, you know, of course, when we're, we're doing a uh, randori, uh, you know, like uh, free practice, then of course we have sure, to get sure. rid of them so that we could practice and all, cause there's a whole bunch of people on the mats, but when we're just throwing, when we're just practicing our throws, we, we pull out the crash mats, which I think is a, you know, it's, it's a great idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, why take all those falls if you don't have to, 